What is up, Earth's mightiest subscribers? It's Ernie, Blurred Without Fear. Welcome back to the channel. Okay, so today's video, we are gonna be talking about Dynamite Comics, the boys, and more importantly, breaking down the core team of the boys, where you know, last time we talked about the seven, this time we are talking about the boys themselves, and we're gonna break down each character who is a member of the boys, or at the very least, is <clears throat> the boys adjacent. And we're gonna break down the differences and similarities between the comic book versions of these characters and the television series versions of these characters. We're gonna talk about all that and more right now, but first, wash your damn hands. And let's hit that intro. Word the wise, grass only greener when it's fertilized. Gave them truth in these songs, they prefer the lies. That's any beautiful, a drift in her purple lies. You can't see me, you see me. Wondering how I reach more evolutions than Evie and make it look easy. Before we get started, if you want to see more awesome comic book videos like this one, it only takes two clicks to become one of Earth's mightiest subscribers. Click, click. Okay, so let's go ahead and get the main overall differences between the boys on TV versus the boys in the comics out of the way right now. The main difference between the show and the comics is that the boys are not afraid of the Seven. In the television series, the boys are depicted as being scared of the superheroes and the Seven more specifically because they have superpowers and could easily kill them. But in the comics, the same compound V that powers the heroes is also used by the boys to give them equal footing when battling the soups. In fact, in the comics, the superhero community as a whole, especially the Seven, are actually terrified of the boys, and in many cases, tiptoe around them so as to not piss them off. Now let's break down some of the characters. First off, let's start with the Frenchman, AKA Frenchie, real name unknown, first appeared in The Boys number two in 2006. One of the original boys, Frenchie is, as his name implies, French. He's one of the more extreme and violent members of the group and also one of its biggest agitators. Of the members of the boys, other than Billy, he's the first to take a liking to Huey. Unlike his TV show counterpart, played by Tamer Capon, Frenchie is very into violence and is quick to throw himself headfirst into a fight due to his spontaneous fits of anger, especially if someone insults his French heritage. He's also incredibly angered by violence towards children, which will also send him off the deep end. It's one of the reasons why both himself and the female are considered the hitters and muscle of the team. And that's saying something for a group that includes Mother's Milk. He is very skilled in the use of demolitions and ballistics thanks to his military background. And even though Butcher leads the team, the one thing he never questions is Frenchie's expertise on explosives. In the comics, Frenchie is referred to as having a better nose than the team's dog, Terror, which is never explained as to whether this is natural or due to his usage of Compound V. Interesting thing about Frenchie's background is that during the boys number 37, it is revealed he became a pacifist after he left the military. But due to his childhood rival stealing his girlfriend and killing his father during a bicycle race, Frenchie dropped the vow of pacifism and killed his rival. It's also never made explicitly clear if Frenchie is in fact an actual Frenchman. It is notable during the revelation of his origin that other people in his home town of Franglais, which translates to French English, refer to him as Frenchy. He also speaks very broken French and using a lot of English slang and euphemisms. We also know from Butcher's files on Frenchy that he served in the French Foreign Legion, which could just as easily confirm his French heritage as it could debunk it, considering that the FFL is open to foreign enlistment. Just like on the TV show, French Frenchie is very much into the female. They often fight alongside one another, often working in tandem and during downtime, even play board games with each other. A lot of their chemistry, much like the TV show, is due to him treating her like a human being, something no one else had ever tried. They've only ever really been shown to be cross with each other once during the series, and it was while Frenchie was attempting to stop her from carrying out a mob hit and throwing himself directly in the path of her carnage, saying, I'd rather 
rather die than not be your friend. And if it has to be by your hand, so be it. Whereas the female simply walked away. Speaking of the female of the species, or just the female, real name unknown first appeared in The Boys No. 2 in 2006. Unlike her TV show counterpart played by Karen Fukuhara, it is depicted as being brought to a Japanese equivalent to Vought American's Labs, where her mother worked because she couldn't afford a babysitter. Due to this, when the female was an infant, she found her way into a lab in the facility and got into some Compound V. When the scientists discovered her, she emerged and ripped the scientists in the labs to ribbons. They eventually subdued her and kept her imprisoned to experiment on her, but she would eventually escape after she got older thanks to the boys raiding the facility. In the TV show, she's a member and deserter of the Shining Light Liberation Army and is later captured and experimented on after defecting. Often prone to fits of blind rage that only Frenchie can seem to calm her down from, she is incredibly powerful, possessing a superhuman strength that is at least on par with Stormfront of the Seven. She is so powerful that when she attacks someone, she is able to insta-give her targets, leaving behind a misty cloud of blood and a torrent of guts and organs within seconds. She also enjoys ripping the faces off her targets. In regards to her extreme violence, Frenchie once said that she does these things because she cannot not do them. She also possesses superhuman speed and reflexes, durability, and a regenerative healing factor, something that allowed her to recover from a coma she was put in after her battle with Stormfront. The female is not necessarily an original member of the group, but was one of its earliest. She is easily the most violent and unhinged member of the group. Other than Frenchie, she seems to really like animals and has no interest in harming them. She absolutely loves Butcher's dog, Terror. As mentioned earlier, she doesn't just work for the boys, she's also a contract hitman, often pulling jobs for the mafia when she doesn't have official boys business to take care of, much to Frenchie's chagrin. She doesn't speak often and is mute by choice, though she does occasionally say things from time to time. The first time she ever speaks is in The Boys number 66, simply saying the word, ha, when she discovers that Huey is using Queen Maeve's file to jerk off to and spoke in a full sentence for the first and only time in the entire series, saying, I hate mean people. Next up is Lieutenant Colonel Greg D. Mallory. He is mentioned multiple times throughout the run of the series, but is never formally introduced until The Boys number 49 in 2010. Unlike his TV show counterpart, Grace Mallory, played by Layla Robbins, in the comics, Mallory is a man and in his 90s. He's also the first test subject for the current version of Compound V. The usage of Compound V keeps him looking young, seemingly in his late 50s or early 60s. By the start of the series, Mallory is already retired and seemingly operating as a background figure. Mallory is a World War II vet, ex-CIA, and also a founding member of the boys. Mallory founded the team in response to being present during the Battle of the Bulge, where Vought used superheroes in the military and the entire battle was botched as a result. Their lack of discipline and ability to simply follow orders led to the deaths of many, and it drove Mallory to fight back against Vought. Similarly to the TV series, Vought is trying to get superheroes into the military as an angle for the first and second season of the show as an homage to the storyline. Also like the TV series depicts, Mallory's grandchildren were murdered by Lamplighter. Though the circumstances of how and why this happened on the TV series remain a mystery, in the comics it was due to the boys blackmailing the Seven after they botched the 9-11 rescue attempt. This led to Lamplighter going rogue and attempting to kill Mallory, but wound up killing his grandchildren instead. This ultimately led to the boys being offered Lamplighter on a silver platter by the Seven as a way of keeping peace between them. Despite being retired by the time the series starts, Mother's Milk was in touch with Mallory the entire time, and Mallory even went undercover to spy on Wee Huey to see if he was capable of really being one of the boys, and also because Mother's Milk was worried about him. Next up is Terror. Real name, best boy, just kidding, it's not, but it should be. 
first appeared in The Boys No. 1 in 2006. Terror is Butcher's pet bulldog who tends to go on missions with the team. He's been trained to hump anything he's pointed at on command and violently. All Butcher has to say is f*** it. Billy is very particular about this little puppers, and rightfully so. He's sweet and adorable. When he's not trying to ram his red rocket in you, Butcher has vindictively hunted down and tortured and eventually murdered those who have hurt Terror in the past, one of which was an ally of Stormfronts by the name of Crimson Countess. While Terror has a close bond with everyone on the team, he shares the closest bond with the female, and he guarded her while she was in a coma the entire time, even laid by her and seemed incredibly depressed. On the TV series, Terror is shown off and on in the trailers and promotional material for the first season, but never actually shows up. He does seem to be featured just the same in a lot of the season two promos and trailers. Whether he actually shows up this time, we'll have to wait and see, and by the time this video was made, which was roughly around early August and will probably not be released until the day of or day before the season two premiere, I just don't have that information. Next up is Wee Huey. Real name Huey Campbell first appeared in The Boys No. 1 in 2006. Huey's induction into The Boys starts when his fiance is killed by a careless A-Train while he's chasing down a supervillain while traveling faster than the speed of sound. Unlike the TV series, Robin isn't run through by A-Train, but rather the person he was chasing. Learning about what happened to Huey and his fiance, Butcher decides to recruit him to take Mallory's place and manipulates Huey by using his grief and personal vendetta against Soups to drive him. The same way Butcher is driven to kill the Soups because he suffered a similar fate as Huey. Unlike his TV show counterpart played by Jack Quaid, Huey is a Scotland native and also an adopted child. He's also drawn in the comics to look like Simon Pegg, who oddly enough plays Huey's dad on the TV series. Similarly to the show, Huey does have a bit of a strained relationship with his parents. In the comics, though mostly for the same reasons, being simply that growing up, he was always failing at things or falling victim to embarrassing incidents. One thing comic book Huey has over TV Huey is that he was a natural detective as a kid. He's depicted as having incredible deductive and inductive reasoning and was solving mysteries as a child, even uncovering an illegal cigarette ring. And as a member of the boys, he was able to determine multiple plans, both by the seven and the boys own Billy Butcher before anyone else did. Of the boys, Huey is the least suited for field work. He never gets a taste for the fighting and killing the way the others do. He hates it and never really gets used to it or accepts it. In fact, he vehemently hates it and grows even more intolerant of it as the series goes on. The first time Huey takes Compound V, it is, in fact, without his permission. Unlike Butcher, Huey, despite the grief caused to him by the superhero community, actually manages to have decent and even in one case a successful relationship with superheroes, namely Starlight, who he accidentally begins dating, not realizing who she is. He's also fought for and defended superheroes against other superheroes, something that has royally angered Butcher, who sees soups as nothing more than devils who can't be trusted. Huey rarely stoops to Butcher's level. Even when Butcher brings him A-Train, tied up, bound, and gagged, and primed for killing, Huey refuses to kill A-Train, even after all the recordings Butcher provides showing how little A-Train cared about killing his fiance or the Seven's plans for dealing with the public. The only thing that triggered him to kill A-Train is when he hears that they hired Starlight to the Seven simply to degrade her. One major difference from the TV series is that when Butcher discovers Huey is dating Starlight, Rather than use that connection to his benefit, like in the TV series, Butcher tries to break them up, revealing Starlight's sexual assault to Huey and framing it as though she enjoyed it, something that caused Huey, lacking the context of the situation, to become disgusted with her and ultimately leave her, though they would later rekindle their relationship. Another kind of problematic thing that happens in Hero Gasm number three is Huey falls victim to Black Noir during an attack and is sexually assaulted by him, with Noir basically shoving his fingers up Huey's rectum, something that would plague him for most of the rest of the series until he could admit it out loud. 
And even when he did this, it was largely ignored by the boys. Series creator Garth Ennis has often said that Huey is the most relatable character of the series and that he is made to be that way because Huey has a quotey fingers total inability to learn from his mistakes and change his ways, which will eventually stand him in good stead. No doubt Huey's tendency to mope and turn inwards is a source of frustration for many readers, all used to comic heroes who learn from experience and develop into fully rounded characters, ready to handle handle anything. In my experience, this is like no one who's ever existed in real life. Even the most capable people either maintain or eventually return to their essential flaws. I doubt any 20-something lad unused to trauma and violence could simply absorb it straight away. And if he did become hardened or inured to it, it would be as a different, less sensitive person. In other words, Huey's bizarre triumph is that he remains Huey. And this does actually, in fact, track. Because of any character in the series, Huey is the only relatable one. Next up, the legend, real name unknown, first appeared in The Boys issue number seven in 2007. The legend is technically not a member of The Boys, but he does act as an informant for the team on all superhero matters. The legend comes off as a bit of a sardonic take on comic book legends Jack Kirby and Stan Lee. More so Jack Kirby. And as one might guess after hearing that, he is a retired comic book writer and editor who worked for Vought American's side business, Victory Comics. His whole job was making the superheroes Vought produced seem even more grandiose and amazing than they already were and make them like the heroes you see in the comics we have in the real world. As a result of this, he has an infinite well of knowledge about every superhero Vought has ever produced. As one might not expect, despite his work with comics, he actually hates comic books by the time we meet him in the series. Plot twist, he lives under a comic book shop. The legend has a particularly interesting relationship with Seven member Queen Maeve. The relationship they have at times seems almost like a father-daughter dynamic, other times more like close friends, and then at other times incredibly sexual and ridiculously lewd. Speaking of relationships, he has two sons, one of which died in Vietnam and the other being Blarney Cock, a superhero on the team Teenage Kicks, the boys' parody of the Teen Titans. The legend does not, at this moment prior to the boys' season two, have a TV show counterpart that we are aware of, and whether he gets one remains to be seen. Next up, Mother's Milk, real name unknown, first appears in The Boys issue number two in 2006. The heart and soul of the team, Double M, is also one of the more OCD members of the team as well. He's also the most methodical. He was taught by his father to always be diligent and to always check every angle imaginable when tackling a problem. This led to him becoming an expert investigator and one of the key factors in the boys learning as much as they do about the Seven, as well as other superpowered heroes and teams' activities throughout the comic series. He's also the only American-born character on the boys aside from Mallory. He also served in the U.S. Army as a ranger. Mother's Milk, other than Huey, is the only other character we encounter on the boys who actually believes there are superheroes who are trying to do the right thing. He's also one of the only people Billy Butcher is actually nice to. He rarely, if ever, gives Double M the levels of grief and disrespect he gives to everyone else, and Billy respects Mother's Milk more than he does most anyone else. As far as we can tell up until this point, one key difference between Mother's Milk in the comics versus the version of him played by Laz Alonzo on the Amazon Prime TV series is that he's also the only member of the boys to actually have been exposed to Compound V since the day he was conceived. Not unlike the members of the Seven, though his introduction to it comes about a little differently. His mother worked in a factory that once belonged to Vought American and was used to create Compound V. This factory was never properly decontaminated after it was re-outfitted, leading to her eventual contamination with Compound V. As a result, both 
Double M and his brother were exposed to it, and his brother developed mental disabilities due to this. This led to Mother's Milk having to have regular doses of Compound V in order to live. How he achieved this was drinking his mother's breast milk, still contaminated with the substance. This is something that, as a full-grown adult, upsets him and even makes him physically ill. He's also got a bit of a breast fetish too, because why not? Double M's brother died as a result of his developing powers at a later age. His body mass grew so quickly in the span of a matter of seconds that his head was crushed by a helmet he was wearing at the time. Even Milk's mother developed powers eventually, turning her into an amorphous blob of a woman who has become more monstrous and inhuman as time has gone on and remembers little to nothing about her life before other than her son, Mother's Milk. Milk would eventually develop powers of his own during his time in the U.S. Army while being a part of a heavyweight boxing program. During a match, he accidentally punched his his opponent's head clean off his shoulders due to his super strength suddenly kicking in. This would lead to his court-martial and imprisonment until Billy Butcher eventually found him and got him released. His nickname, Mother's Milk, is derived from his addiction to his mother's breast milk, as well as the notion that he is the kindest and most pure-hearted member of the boys. Another key difference in the comics versus the TV series is that the Mother's Milk on the TV series is married to a woman named Monique, who seems to be a rather nice individual. In the comics, Mother's Milk was married to a woman who eventually became a drug addict. They had a child together, a child who, as they got older, wound up being in a pornographic film with her own mother. His daughter, Janine, who is 12 at the time of the comics, as a result of the compound V in Mother's Milk's system, looks several years older and is far more developed than she should be at her age. An interesting little aside and kind of a peek into the window of why Mother's Milk is the way he is, especially in regards to his own abilities, Mother's Milk once tried to save a woman whose car fell off a bridge and though he was able to catch her by the arm, she was still strapped into her seatbelt and unable to get free. This led to him pulling her from the car as it eventually crashed to the ground below, but also ripped her in half from the waist down. And while Mother's Milk held her dying upper torso, her last words were of her infant children still in the car. This incident gave Mother's Milk PTSD and is a lot of the reason he works with the boys to bring down Vaught. On the TV series, Mother's Milk is sometimes referred to as Marvin, though in the comics, his actual name is never revealed. Now, this is a major spoiler warning. Technically, everything that I'm about to talk to you right now is all stuff that could potentially spoil this upcoming season of The Boys, or maybe even future seasons of The Boys, so I do warn you to listen to these next words that I talk about in regards to Billy Butcher at your own peril. If you're still here, we're about to talk about him. That said, Billy Butcher, real name William J. Butcher, first appeared in The Boys number one in 2006. A native of England, specifically London's East End, growing up in an abusive home, watching his father beat his mother relentlessly for years, likely didn't do Billy any favors in his eventual turning into one of the most ruthless and amoral characters in the entire series. He'd eventually go on to serve in the Royal Marines, but eventually went down a path of self-destruction, excessively drinking and attacking both friend and foe. Something that even led to him eventually being court-martialed, but his life actually came together when he met his future wife, Becky Saunders. The boys' operations leader, Mallory, always surmised that Becky was the literal music that soothed the savage beast because the moment she entered Butcher's life, he changed into a more caring, less violent, more humane, and ultimately more tranquil human being. Unfortunately, that all came to a startling end when Butcher and Becky became distant with each other after going on a vacation. Butcher felt like maybe something had happened, possibly infidelity. Becky wouldn't touch him, wouldn't look at him, seemed to never even want to speak to him. But the truth was that she had been raped, and not just by anyone, but by a super homelander to be precise. But as we talked about in my previous video for The Seven, this isn't really Homelander. It's actually Black Noir, who is an exact clone of Homelander and is dressed up as if he is Homelander at the time of Becky's rape. Butcher wouldn't learn about the specifics of Becky's rape 
or any of what actually happened until after her death when Mallory gives him Becky's diary. Now, here is a key element that deviates greatly between the TV series and the comics. You see, in the TV show, where Billy the Butcher is expertly played by actor Carl Urban, Becky was raped, presumed killed, with Butcher thinking she's actually just missing, but then later learning that she was pregnant with Homelander's child and died in childbirth when the baby heat visioned his way out of her body. This actually, to a degree, happened in the comics. The baby ripped and tore its way out of her womb, laser eyeing anything in its sight, leaving Billy no choice but to kill this superpowered flying laser eyed newborn baby in one of the most brutal fashions you'll ever see in any of the boys' comics. Whereas in the TV show, her death was a cover for her actually still being alive and raising Homelander's child in secret. Despite the dramatic changes between the TV series depiction of Becky's fate and the comics depiction, you'd probably understand why Butcher hates superheroes. The reason why Butcher empathizes so much with Wee Huey and eventually tries to use him as a means to an end with his own team is because he was in a similar position as Huey. When Becky was killed, the UK's government tried to get Butcher to sign an NDA and cover everything up. He refused, something that mirrors what Vought tried to do with Huey in the TV series when his fiance was killed by A-Train's carelessness. This would also be what attracted Mallory to Butcher in the comics and led to him recruiting Butcher into the boys. Butcher has operated as second in command of the boys' original lineup, but for the majority of the comics run, he is the top dog and leader of the unit. Butcher is one of the few main characters in the entire series whose real name is revealed. Since Butcher is ex-military, it's no surprise he is trained in unarmed combat as well as firearms. He is absolutely merciless when he fights against superheroes. He's willing to pull any dirty trick in the book and in many cases will kill without so much as batting an eyelash. The team's name, The Boys, is actually something Billy came up with himself, referring to the East End of London saying, The Boys are who you send to take care of troublemakers. Butcher is a master manipulator, something Mother's Milk is quick to warn Huey about. He's capable of manufacturing just about any lie or situation he desires to get the results that he ultimately wants, simply by using his words, each of which is heavily calculated and plotted out. Butcher says nothing willy-nilly. His relationship with director Rayner is a prime example of this. Butcher wants Rayner to think he is a lecherous and sex-driven individual. He's actually not, but he uses this presumption against her to make sure she always underestimates him and he can always surprise her. Same goes for other characters like Frenchie and the female. He knows that they are driven by violence, and in often cases, just for violence sake. He knows just how to manipulate every event and encounter the boys have had since he handpicked them for the team to ensure diplomacy is rarely, if ever, an option and that pure, unadulterated violence is always the medicine. That said, for all Butcher's misgivings, he does actually care about each member of his team, regardless of what they think of him. He genuinely cares about Wee Huey, even though he always places him in uncomfortable situations where he's forced to do things he doesn't want to do, like be violent or kill people. He even manipulates Huey. Even Mother's Milk. Butcher knew how much Mother's Milk's wife was ruining both Milk's and his daughter's life, specifically his daughter with her mother dragging her into a life of drugs and pornography when she was barely a teenager. Butcher killed Mother's Milk's ex-wife, ripping her in half before his daughter's eyes and swearing her to secrecy about it. But despite his brutality, he did it for Mother's Milk because he knew how much this knowledge of what was happening to his child would hurt him. He's also not afraid to go solo dolo on missions he thinks he can handle alone and even some he feels would needlessly risk his team lives. That said, he does personally orchestrate certain events that would be very easy to make one believe Butcher is just a sociopath and nothing else and doesn't really care about any of them. At the end of the day, Butcher is not a hero and isn't a character you're supposed to identify with on any level and feel good about it. He's a terrible man who ultimately ruins and in some cases ends the lives of everyone he supposedly cares about. 
he also ultimately betrays the boys to suit his own ends in his dedication to his mission of vengeance against superheroes, leading to Wee Huey having to end his life. And there you have it. That's everything you need to know about each of the boys' principal characters and even a boys' adjacent character here or there. I hope you guys enjoyed this, of course. Yeah, as we know, The Boys Season 2 will be opening up on September 4th of this year, and I'm looking very forward to it. I honestly don't think that we're going to see many, if any of these things that I mentioned in this video actually be brought up on the show. I feel like Amazon is going to go in a very different direction, and like they kind of have in a lot of regards gone in a different direction with the first season. I think the second season will be no different at all. That said, I had a good time with this video. I hope you guys did too, and let me know what you think about Dynamite Comics, The Boys. Have you always known about them, or are you today years old finding out about them? Wash your damn hands and sound off in the comments. So hey, you made it to the end of the video. Awesome for you. If you enjoyed this video, and if you made it this far, I don't see how you didn't, do me a favor, Hulk smash that like button. And if you want to see more awesome videos like this one, make sure you click subscribe so you can become one of Earth's mightiest subscribers and tap that bell so you know when I post up. Also, feel free to go check out my Patreon, where if you're chucking a buck, you can get early access to most of my videos up to a week early. And if you have time, make sure you swing by nerd901.com, where you can find more of my content as well as other amazing stuff. Anyways, until next time, I love you 3000 plus ultra.